One of the reasons I like coming here so much is really because it's really quiet. It's always dark. There are no street lamps in the cemetery. I've come back time and again to photograph in the cemetery at night. In fact, I've come to the cemetery more often at night than in the day. In the day, it's really hot. While You Were Sleeping started in the early 2000s. Those were the early days when I was trying to figure out what kind of photography that I really wanted to do. So I did almost all kinds of photography that would put food on the table and would pay. I, I needed to find something else to do for myself that I, I really wanted to do. I got myself a medium format camera, uh, a Hasselblad. So I, I started to drive out in the middle of the night and then I came up with this whole series of images of Singapore. Uh, they were all shot late at night in places that were often very dark. Um, they were landscapes really, uh, nocturnal landscapes of Singapore. But um, they were places that looked so alien after you look at the image that was made that most people could not believe that they were Singapore. And this became a book while you were sleeping. And I guess it can be taken to mean more than just sleeping. Oftentimes, for a lot of people, even when they're awake, they're not really seeing. Uh, they, they look at things, but they don't necessarily see what is there. Okay, let's see if we can make a picture out of this. This is the very same tree that I shot in 2003. So the tree has changed a lot in the last 18 years. I used to call it the Singapore tree. It was one of the more iconic images inside the first book because it was shaped like Singapore. But, well, it's no longer shaped like Singapore. And um, the thing is this, you know, this area used to be full of graves. There were tombstones everywhere, but they've all been exhumed now. And we can joke about it and tell people that, you know, uh, this is Singapore. In Singapore, even the dead need to move house. But it's true. God, nice. You know, when I say that at night, in places like Jurong, you know, everything takes on a different otherworldly visage. And this tree is one very good example of that. I mean, in the day, you might not even take a second glance at it. But at night, when it's silhouetted against the, the red glow of the industrial sky, it, it's slightly ominous. And with the dormitory in the background, it, it makes an interesting composition.
when you photograph at night, things look different. Uh, but because there's light pollution, there uh, there's ambient light in one form or another, and if you expose something long enough, an image would record on film or today on digital sensor. And so you could do this in, in all kinds of places that uh, you could not actually see with anything with your naked eye. And I found that very fascinating. The late Gary Winogrand, he was a street photographer. He once said that, you know, I photograph so that I can find out what something looks like photographed. And I, I think that that's something that I bring with me uh, till today, where I want to make a picture of something, some place, uh, just to see what it looks like as a photograph. I photographed in MacRitchie Reservoir for every single one of the books and I'm back here again. And the reason why I've come here time and again in the last like 15 years to do while you're sleeping is because very little changes in the reservoir because it's part of the nature reserve. And this is one of those things that are quite constant despite all the rest of Singapore changing so much. And it gives me a bit of a reassurance actually when I come back here and I find that, you know, things are still the same after all this time. And, you know, there might be some small changes here and there, but by and large, most of it is as what I remember it from, you know, the beginning of the 2000s. And it's very comforting, you know, when you come here and you know what to expect, even if it's in the middle of the night. And I think that's one of the reasons why I just keep coming back here. When I first started doing while you were sleeping, and if you told me that one day I might be doing the project with the camera on my mobile phone, I would have said you were crazy. This is a red sign here. It's, uh, it's a sign that there's a sewer that runs below here. So actually, you know, it's not really all uncivilized here. And there used to be, you know, probably a kampong here or people that used to live here. I'm going to try and make a picture of this sewer sign and there's some light coming from the background from the Gimmo flats so here we are in the middle of the Dover forest and 
actually we're hemmed in on all sides by civilization, residential estates. We've got Gimo right here. We've got Mount Sinai behind us, Clementi to the west. We've got Singapore Poly over there. And if you actually listen carefully, you'll be able to hear the MRT going by. But, you know, maybe what we need are yeah, more of these quiet, dark, wild spaces. Actually, this is quite nice, lovely. I really wonder whether I can find the exact spot where I shot that photo all those years ago when there was nothing but the LRT track and all this dirt below it. Pongo is uh, special to me because uh, in a way the first while you were sleeping project started in Pongo. It was relatively close to where I lived and I would drive to Pongo very often just to find something to photograph. And often I was not disappointed because uh, Pongo really looked like this alien landscape back in the early 2000s before it was developed into the town that we know today. And again, it featured in the second book because there were still parts of Pongo that were not developed yet. This road wasn't even here the last time I photographed the second while you were sleeping book and that was only like five years ago, six years ago. And human progress is a strange thing because we've got all these dark, empty construction sites. They're all holding some promise, a promise of this new buildings that will be built, uh, a better life maybe. Cranes are a very outwardly and obvious sign of progress and I think that's why they've made it to my work so often because, you know, they show what is to come. This is Singapore that we live in to think that the change that we are going through in our built environment would slow or stop is actually quite naive. You know, I've uh, taken it upon myself for the next generation so that they may know what Singapore used to be like. What kind of spaces we used to have that may not exist anymore by the time they are around.
Candle, kill my flame. 